From Paul's letter to the Galatians, may I never boast of anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> well, it's great to see everyone this morning. Um, for those who follow the lectionary very closely and always look ahead a little bit, you might be sitting there thinking, those were the wrong readings. Uh, we did not do the readings for the 22nd uh, proper of, the, um, of uh, Sunday and all that. Instead, we moved our feast, our readings from the feast day of St. Francis, which was Wednesday, to today. And back, I don't know, a month, month and a half ago, we de- decided to do that. Don't tell the bishop because they're not supposed to be moved. But uh, we decided, you know, we're going to celebrate St. Francis out at Philip Miller Park. We might as well celebrate St. Francis here and all that he's given us. And we thought it was just a great idea that we had. And then we got the news of Las Vegas. And I was like, Wow. What an amazing moment, that we, we, amazing opportunity we have of this horrible and horrific time because we'll be celebrating St. Francis that following Sunday. And that prayer attributed to St. Francis, which we've said many, many times, starts off, and that's the refrain that I kept hearing as I saw the horrors and all the stories and the hate of Las Vegas. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. That prayer, everyone kind of wonders, was it really Francis's prayer? But it's attributed to him and came out of that movement that he had started. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. What an amazing prayer to lift up. What an amazing prayer to share with others as this turmoil, as this hatred is unfolding in front of us. But as we've all heard many, many times, We have to do a lot more than praying. Yes, it all starts with prayer, but we need to have action. We need to figure out within this country why this hatred is so strong, why the violence is being acted out in so many different ways. And yes, with guns, but also with automobiles, as we've seen, and all over the spectrum. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us so love. We're going to say that entire prayer here at the end of the prayers of the people, and Frank will sing a version of it. And then Cheryl, with her amazing introduction to our service of amazing grace. That's what we need today, is some amazing grace for God to share his grace upon us all so that we might be able to act in whatever ways that we are called to do. And that's what I find amazing that we have this Sunday, the prayers and the, and the readings and all attributed to St. Francis, the celebration of St. Francis. Because St. Francis was a saint who was all in. Once he realized that love of Christ, he was all in. He went all in and did it in an amazing way. So what can we learn from him? This man of faith, this monk, this follower of Christ who prayed a lot but followed those prayers with action. One of my uh, classmates uh, put out a quote this week and I asked him exactly where he got it and he couldn't remember exactly who said it and we searched and couldn't find it. So an unknown source but an amazing uh, amazing statement If you are going to pray that God will move mountains, you better be ready to wake up with a shovel next to your bed. I love that. I love that because, again, we need to lift up our prayers, but if it's just, Lord, you got to do something here, his prayer is going to be exactly the same to us. People, you know my love. You know my, my love that I have for this world. You need to do something down there. Act, whatever way that works for you, whatever way we can do that, act, do something. Be all in. So what is it for us? 
How is it that we can act in a way, and for every one of us, it's going to be a little bit different. How can we be all in? And are we ready to truly be all in? Or do we want to just stick our toe in for a little bit, test the waters, and then say, eh, I'll come back later. I thought after Sandy Hook, something would finally be done. I wonder when the next one will come and we'll say, wow, we thought Las Vegas, something would finally be done. St. Francis was a, a saint who was all in. Listened about his life a little bit. Because he had many, many options to not be all in. Francis was born in 1181. He died in the year 1226. He was a monk and a friar and then the creator of the Franciscan order. But it was his all, being all in that really stands out. He was born of a, a very wealthy family. His, his father was a merchant, a very wealthy merchant. And he lived that lifestyle of wealth He loved that lifestyle of wealth. He worked his way up through the military. He was ready to go. He didn't really pay much attention to the others around him. He didn't have any interest in the poor. He didn't have any interest in those who were sick and injured. And one day he's riding his horse. He's up on, literally, on his high horse, riding down, and he sees this leper along the side of the road. And something in him moved, moved him to stop the horse. And he got off the horse, put his cloak on this gentleman, this leper, sat with him and kissed him on the cheek. At that point, Francis was all in. At that point, he had made that decision to move and to be all in for the poor of God's creation. The poorest of the poor. He went back and he, at some point he heard the words, Francis, rebuild my church. He thought it, God meant literally because the church was falling down. So he went to his father's um, warehouse and he grabbed this giant spool, this bale of silk, and went and sold it and used the money to rebuild the church. Now for some reason his father didn't like that. And his father started a, an argument, actually took him to court, and finally Francis said, fine. He paid back the debt, but he disowned his father, disowned the wealth forever. He took out, off all of his wealthy clothes, laid him at the foot of his father, and walked away. At that point, he was all in, most definitely. He was willing to risk everything to be all in for Christ. How are we ready to be all in? Are we ready to be all in as individuals, as a community, a community of faith? Are we ready to be all in and are we ready? Are we ready for the consequences that might come? Because I don't know about you, that would be hard to lay down all my clothes at my father's feet and walk away. But for Francis, that's what was needed. And I keep praying, Lord, Keep me from that time of temptation. Keep me from that time that I have to make that decision. Thank God I have not had to make that decision. I can walk with my father. I can walk with my family in faith and serve the Lord in amazing ways with that. But what would we be willing to give up if that decision came? What would it take for us to be all in? Jumping back to Las Vegas really quick here. There was a gentleman in Phoenix that was on the news, on the TV news, and he decided to be all in. For him, after Las Vegas, he was done with his guns. He decided he was all in with getting rid of his guns, so he took his automatic weapons, his pistols, and he handed them over to the police department. And the TV was there, and they, had, they filmed him handing the guns over to, an, to a, a uniformed officer. And again, for him, that was what was needed. But all of a sudden, it hit social media. And on his post, all the responses were positive, going, wow, you know, good for you. I might not make that decision, but if it was right for you, great. And then 
after a, a day or so, then the hate started to fill his blog. Then people were starting to question why he did it, what he did, saying that that was wrong, and even to the point of death threats for him. He had to leave town for a few days because the death threats were getting so strong. I don't care where we stand on all, these, on all the different positions, but nobody deserves to have a death threat because they made a decision to give away their guns. And no one should have a death threat if they make the decision to say, I need more guns, because there's both, both sides to that debate. Back at General, Conven- uh, General Convention in Salt Lake City, we had an amazing march of the bishops against gun violence. And they had speakers on both sides And what I came to realize is we were all looking for the same solution to get rid of the violence that is among us. We all saw different ways of getting there, but what we wanted was peace. What we wanted was to be whole. We need to have that discussion as a country, whatever it looks like. What would we be willing to give up to be all in for Christ? Now, this gentleman in Phoenix, there was no religious um, part of that story. I don't know why he decided to do it. But boy, what a statement. And what a suffering he had to go through just to make that. What would it take for us to be all in? What gospel are we sharing out into the world? Again, St. Francis was one of those who came up with that, coined the term, preach the gospel always, use words if you must. He wanted to make sure that the monks that were following him, and he wanted to make sure himself, that he was showing that life of the gospel in his actions. He wanted to make sure that people could see the good news of Christ in all that he does. And he wanted his followers to do the same. Preach the gospel always. Use words if you must. Today's world, I think we need, as Christians, we need to use our words a little bit more. We've kind of rested on that, oh, I preach the gospel with my actions. I don't need to say the words. I think we need to start sharing some of those words. But what gospel are you preaching? If people are looking at your lives, what is that gospel that you are sharing? What story do others see and hear through you? Today we celebrate an amazing person in our history, our Christian faith. But today we are also faced with tough questions ourselves. Are we ready? Are we willing to be all in? And if so, what does that look like for you? What does that look like for us as a community? What gospel are we going to share out into the world? Last week I spoke about being that reflection of Christ out into the world. Are we really ready to reflect Christ and all that that looks like? To reflect his love? to preach his gospel of peace, to preach his gospel of forgiveness. That's always a hard one, isn't it? To share that love of Christ out into the world. Francis was one who was able to embrace that in amazing ways, not just for the people of the world, but for all the creatures of the world. He has many stories about the birds coming down and sitting with him as he preaches to them about saving saving, uh, or a wolf that was devouring people in the community and he went and and sat with the wolf and praised God with the wolf and therefore the wolf became a friend. Whether those are fables or truth or where the truth is and all of that, the main thing that comes out of that is that Francis was one who cared for the entire world, for human beings, for the animals, for even creation itself. That's a gospel I would love to preach. That's a gospel I can be all in for. Now we just got to work out the details. How are we going to be all in? 
Or are we ready to be all in? Because that's okay too. It's a journey of faith. For many years, Francis wasn't ready to be all in. And look what happened to him. May we be open to the spirit of doing new things in and through us. And may we be honest with ourselves and with God and ask, are we ready to be all in? And if we are, how will we be all in? And once in, let us preach that gospel that is spoken to us. For Francis, it was a gospel of poverty and God's love to the least of these. For us, it might be something different. But it has to be filled with the gospel. It has to be filled with peace, with love, with acceptance, with forgiveness. Because that's what we have received from our Lord and Savior. So today, may we ask, are we all in? And, we all, and may we also ask, what is the gospel we, you, are called to preach? And may we be all in and preach it boldly. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.